Welcome back folks, my name's Anthony Valentine the Camper Nerd. Today I would like to talk about diesel camper vans versus petrol camper vans. So here in stock, these particular two, this one is a diesel, turbo diesel Peugeot Boxer and this one is a Peugeot Boxer Petrol. Uh, so we're now well, we're on a lovely sunny day now in August 22 and the current market I'm finding, I've been in this, this is my, I wouldn't say views, it's just my comments and findings that I've found in the motor trade for over three decades. Um, but the current situation is now, we seem to be divided into three camps. We've got a third of the people that will only have a diesel. They've had diesels all their life, they like the economy, uh, the higher mileage they may be able to obtain from a diesel engine, as well as the torque or grunt in uh, layman's terms. Or we've got a third of the people now, it didn't used to be like this, and these are growing in momentum, is who will only have a petrol because the deemed as more green, even though the government many years ago told us diesel is the way to go. Uh, they made it more economical and more cheaper to buy a diesel car and they've done a complete U-turn now and the latest scientific thought is a petrol is greener. Obviously we're going on to petrol hybrids and fully electrics, but that's many years to, in the future. For now, we're in August 2022. So yes, for the petrol, so you've got, uh, it's greener, quieter, smoother. They will do, I would say, averagely about five to the gallon less than a diesel. However, when you factor in too that petrol is five to 10% cheaper at the pump, it's cheaper to service, very little maintenance on a petrol other than some spark plugs. The worst thing can happen is you need some spark plugs, HT leads and a distributor. Um, that's gonna cost you a few hundred pounds. On a diesel, uh, the worst case scenario is you're going to need injectors or a diesel pump and that can be north of £1,000. So when you factor in all the different things, it's not quite as cut and shut a decision. Uh, a few years ago, pre-Covid, maybe three or four years ago, a petrol equivalent was always about a thousand pound cheaper. So when you factored in the thousand pound cheaper, you would have to do a lot of miles in a diesel to get that money back. They've come such forward now petrol models and the government are incentivizing petrol because they're city friendly uh, cheaper on the road tax that the petrols now are on a i would say a direct polarity equal pricing with a diesel model that's what i'm finding then you've got the other third of the people who are undecided but they will go diesel or petrol depending on the particular camper or motor home they want that the, it depends so on the larger motorhomes, there's no denying it, on the larger motorhomes, larger than these, you're better with a big, grunty um, diesel engine, over 2.5, 2.8 turbo diesel. They give you that grunt and the torque. This is probably as large as you want to go on a petrol. This is perfectly fine. I actually drove this over 200 miles on the motorway. This was fine. Its happy speed was about 65 mile an hour, but 70, not a problem. Cruise all day long. So again, it's not, an, I can't give you a definitive answer, folks. It's just my thoughts. Um, I've always had diesel engines for the last couple of months. This is, I've always had a workhorse that I can use, uh, carry lots of things in, have a tow bar. I've actually gone for a three litre Toyota petrol V6. So that's my workhorse now. This one's a diesel. Uh, diesel Fiat Ducato, petrol, duetto. Again, this is very rare because most of the people who had the smiley fronts, they call it the smiley front because this apparently looks like a smile. I had a fleet of these back in the day in the 90s because I had a company called Valentine Van Hire and everyone used to like the diesels. This is super rare because it's petrol, two litre double overhead cam. Not many people had the petrols 20 years ago because they say, five to the gallon less. Um, they weren't as worth as much second hand, but it's become, it's gone all the way, the other way around now, that these are becoming more desirable than a diesel. Uh, this particular one's only done 70,000 miles. In fact, it must have done something right, because the first owner had it for 17 years. They had it from 17 years from brand new, so they must have enjoyed it. And the last owners had it for about 
four or five years. So again, he must have been pleased. Another diesel one, another diesel Peugeot in stock. Peugeot are very renowned for the diesel engines. So yes, I'm sorry I can't tell you whether you should be going diesel or petrol. All I can give you is my thoughts. What I will say, this is a again, slight little edit there. Again, the camera just overheated in this lovely day that we're enjoying in August 2022. Uh, yeah, so I, sorry I can't be more helpful with the diesel versus petrol argument. The only thing I can do and can give you some advice, I've had a lot of inquiries over the last year. Oh no, we can't buy diesel. The government are gonna ban them. This ain't gonna happen, believe it. You can take my word for it. There's no way all the diesel vehicles on the road in 2022, in the next coming few years, off the next government or the government after then, are going to give a blanket ban and they're all going to be um, sent off to the scrapyard. A hundred percent. Take my word for it. That ain't going to happen. What all the governments can do is phase out them from new. So the manufacturers, uh, there's some manufacturers now that don't supply a diesel vehicle anymore. It's only petrol or petrol electric hybrid. And eventually I forgot what the latest was. They're trying to phase out petrol and electric by something that was 2030 uh, forward. But we're not at that stage. All the vehicles that are on the vehicle, can you imagine all these classic vehicles from years ago? They're still on the road. They will always be on the road. So it will only be phased out on the new vehicles. So if you're one of the third at the moment has to buy diesel, you can have that diesel. It just means at the moment that you're going to be highly taxed if you want to go into a city or band, that's it. But you'll still be able to travel up and down the breadth of the country, like all the lorries and large delivery vans. If you're petrol, again, there's not going to change that you've got to go to electric. You'll be happy for years to come. Um, and we're a long time off having an electric motorhome or camper van. So I hope that clarifies a little bit for you folks. There's no definitive answer whether you should go down the petrol route or the diesel route at the moment, but that's my thoughts. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on that next video. My name's Anthony Valentine, the camper nerd. I'll give you some more tips and trades, insights. Thanks for watching.